a box just arrived all the way from California to Virginia from Nitro Plains and inside the box we have uh, two Tech One aircraft. One is the uh, Extra 330 EPP ARF and the other is the Yak 54 3D EPP ARF. Box is just now freshly opened and this is what it looks like. I don't see any damages so I guess UPS did a good job. A little crumpled up box used as uh, packing material. Nice label on the front of these. There's the extra 330. And it's the Yak 54. All right, let's take a look inside the the Yak 54 and see what it looks like inside the box. And there's what the Yak looks like. Looks like it's nicely packed, has all the electronics. This is an ARF. It's supposed to be almost ready to fly, but uh, looks like it's going to take a little bit of building. Probably the same thing on this extra 330. Yeah. I sure do like the paint colors on this thing. The, the color scheme and the detail and the painting looks good. And this is supposed to be EPP. It feels fairly firm, yet resilient. So I guess the next step is to put these things together and see how they fly. Both of these planes use a 9x6 prop. But uh, just for comparison, I laid down here a 10x6, that's this black one. And this other black one is an 8x4. And the 9x6 is right in the middle there. So there's all the parts laid out. I believe these planes have a 900 millimeter wingspan on them. All made out of EPP. And it comes with a, a bunch of uh, Tech One hobby parts. Here's the motor. The motor looks like uh, an AS2212-10 and the KV is 1250. And it comes with a motor mount and prop saver, it looks like. Yeah, prop saver and bands. And then there's a 30 amp ESC. These have the connectors already on them, so I don't have to do any soldering. Just connect right up. And then we have four servos. I guess they're for the ailerons, two servers for the ailerons, one for the elevator, one for the rudder. And then there's a bag of parts. Oh, nice wheels. Look at that. Check that out. Yeah, nice and spongy. Looks like good landing gear. And there's the control rods for the servos. It turns out the prop supplied with the airplane was actually a 9x5, not a 9x6. I made a mistake earlier on that. So we got a 9x5 prop and they all supplied they also supplied the motor, a 30 amp ESC, four Tech One servos, and they did not supply the receiver, which I'm going to use a it's a Spectrum AR6110E copy from Hobby King. I don't think they carry this anymore, but it's a Spectrum compatible receiver and it's small enough to go into the the hole they carved in the body of the airplane. And I've supplied my own battery too, so you gotta supply the receiver and the battery. Everything else comes with it. Except the radio, of course. You gotta bring you gotta supply your own radio. Um, so the net first thing to do is just test out this electronics and see if the stuff they send actually works. It wouldn't be good to mount it on the plane and then find out it doesn't work and have to rip off the servos and start over again. So let's give it a little test. Okay, so we're hooking up the battery.
Okay, that was the motor making its customary beeps from the ESC. The radio was already on, of course. I bound this thing earlier, so the radio was uh, already set up. Uh, now, I've got four servos here. These two here are supposed to be for the ailerons, one on each wing. And what I've got going there is I opted out of the splitter cable. I could have used the splitter cable and got down to just a four channel receiver. So I would have these two for the ailerons on one channel and then I'd have these two each on a separate channel. That's three channels and then the fourth channel would be for the throttle for the motor. But because I'm using a six channel receiver I can go ahead and put one of these aileron servos on the aileron channel, the other on the auxiliary, and then I've set up a, a, a wing type of dual aileron on the radio so I can get away without that splitter cable. So it looks like everything's working. When I move this elevator stick up and down, this servo is working, so you can see it wiggling there. And if I move the rudder stick, that one's working. Yeah, and the motor also works, I just found out. I moved the rudder, I gave it a little throttle. And you can see the motor take off there. So, looks like everything's working. Ailerons, rudder and elevator. Taking up five channels of a six channel receiver. Test complete. So here's the basic plan. The battery I've chosen, which may be a little underpowered, but they call for a 1000 or more. I think I've got a 750 in here, but it seems to power everything. Fits nicely in the hole and they provide this strap to lock it in. The motor, it looks like it sits in there nicely and when I get the parts on that to mount it, it should go right on there. And the receiver should fit nicely in this hole that they've pre-cut. I don't see any problems getting that in. It should fit right in there. And these are the two aileron servos. And they should go on the wings, which have a pre-cut hole right here. And it looks like the wire will be plenty long enough. No problems. Don't need an extension at all. And then we have the rudder and elevator servo. Now they're not going to reach all the way down to this hole here, so I am going to need some extensions on that. But I don't have any extensions, so what I'm going to do is take me... I have a bag of these wires here, servo wires. They're just pigtails, so what I'll probably do is just solder on an extra length so I'll have just the right length wire and no waste and that's the plan. As far as the uh, ESC goes, the ESC they provided seems to me a little bit bigger than the hole that they cut in here. The hole is close but with the wire sticking out I think I'm gonna have to do a little trimming to get those wires in just right. But other than that it should work. So the next thing to do is mount the servos on the body and the wings. I'm going to put on this servo plate, but I'm finding that it doesn't quite fit. It's a little snug fit. So what I'm going to do is trim a little off these edges right here. Take an exacto knife and just trim a little bit of wood off each side. Like that. Oh, hold on. Fit and see it. And then we can slide it on there. Take a 
takes a little bit of finagling, but it'll go on. And there it is. All right, the next thing is to cut a slot 10 millimeters deep from the servo all the way down to where the receiver is going to be. And we'll do that with an X-Acto blade, a fresh X-Acto blade, because we don't want to tear things up too much. Okay, 10 millimeters deep. Let's get my finger right there so it'll keep us steady. Basically cuts very easy, and I've got a fresh blade in here, so it is cuts like butter. All right, there's the groove. I bet you can't see it, because I can't see it either, but it's there. Okay. The servo lead doesn't reach the well for the receiver, so I'm going to add a piece of signal wire about that long right there okay looks good these wires are already pre-tinned so I'm just sticking them together there we go now we're going to put the heat shrink just slide that over each one Get them in the center. Using the solder iron to just shrink it up a little bit. Now I got one more piece, a large piece. I'm just going to put over all three of the little pieces. Yeah, it's going to keep them flat. Yep. Okay, pushing the wire into the slot with a popsicle stick. And there it is. The first thing is to glue the little flange for the servo with some CA glue. In fact, I found out the whole plane can be glued with CA glue according to the directions. And stick it down in there. And later we'll put two screws in once that dries. Now that the elevator servo is installed, I'm going to use the same method to cut a slot for the rudder servo. Make a 10 millimeter deep slot with an X-Acto knife. So both the rudder servo and the elevator servo are now installed and hooked to the receiver. And I just tested them a minute ago to make sure they both operate and that I didn't make any wiring mistakes. Next we're going to work on the wings and cut us a 10 millimeter deep slot for the wire for 
the wing servos on each side. And push those wires into the slot with a popsicle stick. Again applying some CA glue to the bottom of the plate on both sides. And mounting that into the hole. Now we're going to cut the 10 millimeter deep slot for the other wing. Pushing the wire into the slot with a popsicle stick, same as I did on the other wing. Okay, gluing the servo plate in just like the other one. Okay, so now both wings are done. Just going around all the servos and putting the screws in that I left out. And I'm going to put the servo arms on too and fasten them down. I don't want to lose that tiny little screw that comes with each servo arm. So this is a good way to keep it. Making a hole for the wing servo wires to go through so they can get to the receiver. Okay, I've fed the wire through the fuselage from the wing servo and now I'm just inserting the wing into the slot. Well, the wing is inserted now, but this video is getting to be a little bit too long. I wanted to keep the whole video under 20 minutes, but there was just no way. So I'm going to call this part one, and we'll continue on with the rest of the build in part two, and have a little flight test at the end.